So that's kind of a habit that I have is I focus on what is, and I've been following you for a couple of years now, and I understand all of your teachings technically. And the application of it in my life is I find that it's a little bit more difficult than it seems like listening. You want to know why? You're doing it now. So this is what you just said to us. I get it theoretically. It is logical to me. But my practice of it could feel better. But it's hard, engine on the wrong end of the chain, and, 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 and. This gathering with this analogy is really to put you in a position of choosing your words more carefully. But really, we can't ask anyone to give us words that they haven't been thinking about because before the words can turn to productive, helpful words, the thoughts before them had to turn to helpful productive thoughts and the thoughts before those 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 and so you just got to start somewhere just got to start somewhere that, and that's what I wanted if you could because a lot of times I know that you give those rampages of appreciation that won't help that would not be any different than what you witnessed in Asheville with that very resistant man yeah and what I noticed that you in gave fact, at the end if you're resistant to something and we give mm -hmm. you a rampage <laughs> Toe in a yeah. light socket feeling. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good description. So I wanted to know if you could give some baby steps. We like your words. Baby steps, and our words for baby steps are go more general. Our words for baby steps are get off the specific subject and go to the general subject. And you know where we like to start? Do you believe that law of attraction is real? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that you are a vibrational being? Yeah. Do you believe that you emanate a vibration that law of attraction responds to? Yeah. Do you believe that you get what you think about? Yeah. Do you believe that you as a whole being have two perspectives that are in operation all the time? Yeah. Your inner being perspective and your perspective? Do you believe that your inner being knows what you want? and is calling you toward it? We didn't say, can you hear? We ask, do you believe your inner being knows and is calling you? Do you believe you're being called toward what you are wanting? Yeah, I got that. I got, I got a little hard, hard time with that right now. All right. Do you believe in law of attraction? Yeah. Do you believe that you are a vibrational being? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that you were a vibrational being before you came into this body? You don't remember it, but is it logical? Do you believe that you are more than this physical body? Yeah. Do you believe that there was a source of you before you were this? Did you come from some place or did you just pfft, out of thin air? <laughs> yeah, I think I was source energy at some point and then I came here. Yeah, I can see that. Source energy at some point and then I came here. But do you mm -hmm. think, do you believe that now that you've come here, that there's a source energy part of you? who still exists? Do you think you have a soul? Yeah, I like the feeling of thinking that there's more after this physical experience. So yeah, in the sense that soul, but that sort of feeling of understanding of the relationship between that, you know, that feeling. I guess I don't, I don't feel desires very strongly. These things are important as a basis before you can move forward. You can't understand you can't cognitively, you can't deliberately decide or be guided if you don't have some means of recognizing your guidance. So your guidance is your emotion, but it's helpful to understand why your emotion exists. So if you understand that the emotion that you feel is because your inner being has one opinion and you may have a differing opinion, that's when negative emotion exists. So if you get to the place where you accept that guidance, then and only then can you create your life in any deliberate fashion. Otherwise, it's just a sort of random guessing game that you're offering. Do you acknowledge that your Earth spins in its orbit in perfect proximity to other planets? Yeah, I've heard you say that a lot, and it's, I don't know, I guess I have such a... You think it's an accident? You think anybody's tending to it? You think it just got started, and now nobody's watching? This hotel won't even run like that. 
no, no I, th I think the I, I, I can see how everything is an energy. I can see that. I mean, I have vibration. I understand. I understand that. Like that feeling. I, I have that belief right there. But I also have a strong belief, like my where I'm at vibrationally is seeing everything as oh, there's gravity and stuff like that, and the laws of the universe in that sense. And I guess seeing gravity as source energy is something that I haven't really connected. So you always say that, and I'm like, well, it doesn't. All right, so let's go back to the story that you witnessed here today. So as we pointed out, our friend didn't manufacture through the power of her focused mind a little cloud of dust that made smoke and then a diamond pff, appeared because she conjured and created the diamond. She rendezvoused with it. And so there is so much that has gone before everything that is manifesting now that if you try to go back to the beginning of any of it, you'll be lost in the process of it. So our conversation about the Earth spinning in its orbit is just the fastest, gentlest, usually easiest way, then we can get you to acknowledge that there must be something way bigger going on than humans. That you haven't managed to scrape enough dirt and launch it into orbit yet. And you've been inhabiting this earth for a very long time. So there must be another level of consciousness that has focused some things into being before you even got here. And that same level of consciousness that has focused so many things into being before you ever got here is now focused upon this leading edge with you. At one time, gathering the gases that would produce the matter that would allow the earth to be was on the minds of non-physical energies who were focused with beings that were your beginnings. But today, that's not where non-physical is solely focused. Non-physical now is focused with you out here on this leading edge. And your thoughts are the creation of new things that in future generations will be taken as old hat. These things that you are just now considering, that you are just now pondering, that you are just now launching in very general fashion into your vortex, that some of you will get into vibrational alignment with and will realize into manifestation, you see. You just got to wonder, as humans, how these thoughts do turn to things. How did this stuff get here? How did the stuff that you see all around you, how did it get here? And of course, there is always a logical explanation. Well, somebody created a big machine, and that big machine dug deep in the ground, and that big machine found some sort of minerals and ores and irons, and somebody made a big fire. Of course, there are logical, reasonable explanations for all of it. But without the contrast and the desire and the clarity of the non-physical and the inspiration and the receiving, none of that would be. We've got to take you out of the practical application where it's only action that is ringing your bells into the vibrational understanding before you will ever be the masterful creator that you were born to be. Otherwise, you'll just be moving stuff around like many of the people are just moving stuff around and not owning or understanding your true value or your true legacy or your true future manifestation that we see so vividly now in its vibrational version, you see. And so... Yeah, we get pretty animated because we see this vibrational version. This vibrational version of your now reality is more real to us than anything that you are manifesting because this is where all the energy and all of the action is. And we want you, we so want you in on the popping, the big banging, the things coming into being, you see. And so if we were standing in your physical shoes, as much as you've heard and as much as you know, we would spend not one more minute arguing for one more limitation of not understanding something. You don't have to understand how electricity works to get a room to light up. Just find the switch somewhere and flip it. I guess that leads into my next question is, how do I... I have that sense of guardedness that if I do feel, you've, I've heard, you've mentioned this before and I might have had some clarity, but it slipped away, that if I just relax completely, just like throw caution to the wind. No, no, no. Don't throw caution to the wind. Pay attention to the way you feel. That's not throwing caution to the wind. That's deliberately guiding the energies within you. So sometimes it doesn't feel like the emotions are very strong when I'm not doing anything. Like I wake up in the morning, I can't meditate, but it feels like I'm efforting when I do meditate. I try to relax and breathe thoughts, and then it sort of starts momentum in the sense like... Well, I you see, here's the thing you're not aware of, and most people aren't. You're not aware of the engine on the track that way and the engine on the track that way. You don't even realize you're doing it. 
since you're not aware of it, then you don't feel it. So it takes a while for those engines to pile up in opposition before you are really able to feel the discord in your vibration. And so we are as excited about you feeling strong negative emotion as we are about you feeling strong positive emotion because in either case, your guidance system is kicked in. You see what we're getting at? Yeah, and it, it seems often that the negative emotion is more frequent, I would say, to keep it general, than the more positive trains, like at least recently in my, in my recent... So memory. what's the most recent thing that you remember feeling negative emotion about? Either something that was really recent, so it's hot on your mind, or something that comes up often enough that it's a deal. I guess financial stability is is the biggest one. All right, so give us an example of something that you thought, something that you were doing when that emotional discord became obvious to you. I'm trying to have a stable one. Well, what happened? What happened? Okay. Um Okay, um, got a bill I couldn't pay, got thrown out of where I live, have to live someplace I don't want to live, uh, can't do the things I want to do. What is it? Um, All of the above. What is it? Okay, so I had a domestic partnership yes. with my ex-girlfriend that actually was in a hot seat before too. But she, I guess, I, I decided that maybe it was a good thing to be angry at one point instead of being sad because I, I well, now, can't see. So you're getting carried away into places okay. that you don't need to go. All we want is an example of negative emotion that you feel over something over anything negative emotion that you feel about anything okay i feel overwhelmed and desperate overwhelmed and desperate about mm -hmm. what about my current living situation and my financial situation all right and they're sort of tied together so overwhelmed and desperate and so that emotion is alive and well and it means, we're just going to tell you whether you accept it or not, but we think your logic will help you to accept it. That means that your point of view about what is, and you're really going to like this. In fact, this is a breakthrough for everyone, so just hang here for just a minute with us. We just love giving this to you. And it is only because of the patience and determination of someone innocently willing to make a fool of themselves that this is how we're just playing with you. So just hang in here with us because something really good universally is about to take place here. So you are focusing upon your current situation. Yes? Mm -hmm. Your inner being is focused upon your current situation. Your current situation in the vibrational realm is fantastic. Your current situation in the manifested world sucks. <laughs> so your inner being is a dominant factor in your experience, whether you acknowledge the existence of your inner being or not. We know you do, but we talked about that a little bit. So your inner being so loves your current situation and you so have a different opinion of your current situation because you're looking at what's already manifested and your inner being's looking at the powerful vibrational reality. In order for you to shift, you've got to stop looking at what's manifested and start trying to sense with your emotions what's really going on. You got to find a way of convincing yourself of that. I've lived a lot of life that's made me ask for more. And if this law of attraction thing works at all, and what Abraham is saying about step one is true at all, then I must have amassed a whole lot of things that are eventually going to manifest. But if you need them to manifest so that you can have an emotional response to the manifestation, you're going to be stuck for a very long time. But if you don't need the manifestation, if you can join your inner being in the knowledge of what you have already created, then you've got it made. And like the diamond that showed up instantly... Something will break loose for you too. And just because you can't see it, she didn't see it. She didn't know where it was. Just because you can't figure out how it's going to come, where it's going to come from, who's going to bring it, when it's going to get there, doesn't mean that it's not there ready to come. But you've got to find some way of stretching your mind and allowing yourself to believe that it exists and then start looking for clues or start looking for evidence of it. And it is our promise to you. It is our promise to you. 
then it will start to break loose. 